welcome back to another university segment of Reimagine 2020. My name is Tyler Olson and I am the University Program Director at Mouse Bell. And joining me right now is Salman Tite. Salman, you want to introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Salman Tite. I'm a student at Poir College and uh, I'm happy to be here with you. Yeah, happy to have you. Um, you know, Prague College just recently got in touch with us and your um, professor is uh, doing a lot of work to, you know, get um, blockchain education off the ground over there at Prague College. And we've been really happy to be in communication with him and sort of help him out in that respect. Um, but before uh, you tell me a little bit about that and what's happening on your campus, Maybe you can share some of your background. How did you get interested in um, the crypto space? And more specifically, what about blockchain technology excites you? Uh, I uh, started to be uh, interested at uh, blockchain uh, at the age uh, I was around 20. Now I'm 25, so it's around five years ago. And it's because one of my family member, he actually works for a blockchain company. So uh, I get to know a little bit about the background of, uh, of blockchain and uh, also about uh, the cryptocurrency world. And since then, I started to be very interest, interested uh, how the technology, the technology works behind uh, the the Bitcoin and uh, how it uh, actually can change the world. So I started uh, like this. Yeah. Um, what do you think are some of the most uh, pressing issues that um, blockchain is a potential solution for? Uh, I think uh, especially companies that uh, have a lot of uh, partnerships uh, that need to uh, interact with each other a lot. Uh, so uh, we can take, for example, uh, in supply chain, where you have uh, tier one, two, threes all around the world, and uh, the blockchain can uh, really uh, provide a great solution for these companies. And in addition, I think also in the finance and banking uh, area, where blockchain uh, can be uh, integrated uh, to assist to make transactions uh, of course cheaper faster and more secure so therefore i think in the banking area it could be also um, a great uh, tool for bank to use how do things look in prague are there banks uh are the banks in prague interested in this are they even talking about it how about like you know the government what's their stance on this uh i think from uh, 2017 uh, when uh, the uh, the the currencies actually uh, started to decline and uh, the blockchain became a bit uh, on the sides more, not in the front. Uh, less company actually are talking about uh, blockchain at the moment. Uh, I think there needs a lot of education to be done uh, to uh, actually uh, that company will be aware of the potential that blockchain uh, has beyond uh, being uh, just a cryptocurrency as a Bitcoin, for example. Right, right. Like, you know, they have to sort of actually become aware of how this might behoove them. You know, why, why would they even want to use something like a blockchain? Um, you know, and it seems that one of the big hurdles for banks and other kinds of financial institutions is um, this idea of having to give up the control or having to give up the power on something, you know. Um, yeah. They sort of think that it's just inherently a bad thing if you're not the one that has, you know, um, the um, centralized authority to do certain things. But I think, in fact, what people are going to start to see is that there's a lot of advantages to having, um, you know, working in the background, uh, 
open permissionless um, networks that you know you can sort of um, build things on top of and you can circumscribe your own little space and sort of build your own little applications on that you know you you can still have a um, jurisdiction over your own little corner of the network in that respect right and so mm -hmm. I think that it's only a matter of time before they start to see that um, things aren't really operating in the same paradigm that they're used to and they're going to have to learn to separate um, all of the sort of advantages and sort of pleasures that come with having, you know, control over, over the sort of networks that you're um, working with and operating within and actually having an open system that you can build things on top of. So, yeah, I definitely agree that there's a um, yeah. lot of education that uh, needs to take place uh, before we see some big, you know, retail investors or, um, you know, banks um, integrating these types of systems. Um, yeah. I but, mean, I uh, think, yeah, I yeah. think also that actually the current crisis can actually stimulate the use of blockchain because uh, many of these companies are seeking after a, a solution for the supply chain uh, interruption that uh, has been done by, by the virus. So I think that uh, one of the alternative will be actually the adoption of a blockchain to uh, make the supply chain more effective and efficient. Right. Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree. This is a really opportune time for this technology to, you know, shine on and show us all what it's capable of doing. Um, how about the general public in your area? Are uh, people talking about cryptocurrencies? Do people use it? Um, are they skeptical? Uh, I think that uh, the reputation of the blockchain is something uh, sometimes in a negative uh, in a negative way uh, around uh, the average uh, person because they think directly about uh, money laundering, about illegal activities that uh, comes with the blockchain because it's, uh, of course, uh, anonymous as well if you can use it as a currency. Uh, so I think uh, there should be much more to educate people about uh, beyond, uh, again, beyond that it uh, can be used as also as a technology that uh, supports uh, cryptocurrencies, but it can also be used in uh, a lot of uh, other areas as uh, in uh, businesses, in a private uh, blockchain, for example, or in supply chain. So I think it's a lot about education. Yeah. Um, how about on your campus? What's the state of blockchain education look like over there? Uh, in my university, uh, we actually really learn a lot about uh, blockchain and uh, also our professor um, really tried to integrate uh, the blockchain as a solution of one of the problems uh, that occur at the, at the moment in the world, if it's about uh, fintech, if it's about uh, the COVID-19 pandemic that uh, is happening. And uh, if it's about uh, to making uh, the supply chain more uh, efficient uh, and even if it's about banking. So uh, many times in our assignment, uh, we need to actually use the blockchain and to uh, introduce it as one uh, of the solution for uh, the problem that is uh, that are occurring now in the business environment. So it's actually um, integrated into the course material. Like this is a part of the um, the um, the um, curriculum. Like there's uh, classes that people can take on this stuff. Uh, there is a, a class that uh, is about fintech, and in the fintech class, uh, actually blockchain is uh, also one of the topics. And uh, for example, when we need to write reports, uh, many times we using the blockchain as a solution for one problem that we need to write about. So I see, I see. And um, what are y'all trying to do with your club? 
Uh, at the moment, I mean, we, we just started uh, the club uh, uh, two weeks ago, one week ago even. And uh, our first project uh, is uh, from um, one girl that actually uh, wants to, uh, to uh, put on the blockchain uh, the cassava. Cassava, it's a route uh, that is going uh, in a couple of areas around the world, but she's from Nigeria. And she wants actually to put the farmer uh, supply chain of uh, cassava uh, on the blockchain. Right. I um, remember Bruce was telling us about that. Um, are there any other projects that you or uh, any of your um, colleagues are working on? At the moment, uh, this is uh, our main project or also the first one. Uh, but uh, there are some other ideas. Uh, one of them is uh, factoring. Uh, is to use the blockchain uh, to um, found uh, small businesses with the use of uh, smart contracts of uh, selling uh, their invoices uh, to gain uh, working uh, capital and uh, good cash flow. Uh, so this is uh, probably will be the second project that we will make. Awesome. Well, we're starting to run out of time here. So I want to just sort of leave you with this one last question. You know, it's been an interesting year so far. We're not even six months into um, 2020. And, um, you know, a lot of people have been losing their jobs. A lot of people have been getting sick, um, having to make a lot of adjustments on the fly. Um, how do you see things going forward after all of this? What does the future look like to you? How do you want to reimagine 2020? I think that, uh, I mean, since uh, January when the pandemic started, uh, it actually helped uh, for people and for businesses understand how blockchain can be used, used for their business, uh, for their business model, uh, if it's in supply chain. So I think it's uh, this pandemic uh, gave it kind of a boost uh, and accelerated. I mean, the, especially the, the knowledge about it and the use about it. And I'm sure that businesses will uh, adopt it because of the pandemic and because they face uh, problems that, uh, that actually happened because of the pandemic. Uh, so I, for blockchain, I think it will be a great year. I definitely agree. Well, Salman, thank you again for taking some time out of your day to hop on a quick chat with me. Um, I hope that you have a good rest of 2020. I wish the club at Prague College a lot of success in your education endeavors and um, feel free to reach out to us anytime you want. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. All right, man. Have a good day. Thanks.